My name's Guy Kesterman and I've been testing mountain bikes for over 25 years and I've been riding the Lapierre EZST AM9 around Gisborne Forest Trails. So I've got a bit of light left now to talk you through the detailed tech specifics on the bike. So it's Zesty, it's uh, Lapierre's trail and all mountain platform. They actually come in two guises, uh, but all these EZSTs are AM platform. This is the AM9 and there's also a top of the range limited platform as well. Uh, AM means it gets 150 mil travel at the front uh, with this Fox 36 performance fork. Uh, that's the kind of heavier duty performance is the heavier duty version of the fork uh, with the 6000 series aluminium chassis so it's actually a heavier fork but it's a lot stiffer and smoother as a result to be honest uh, it's got this grip damper on there but what you've got is this low speed clicker on the top and grip started off as kind of fox's cheap and cheerful damper but I mean, and this is still is, you know, the more basic end of the grip two in the grip family. And it now goes up to the grip two, which is their top end damper. But actually it's been so smooth and so successful. They've actually kind of uh, extended it out right through their fork range. So as you know, I loved it on the rhythm forks to start with. And this is based in the rhythm and performance. There's not a massive amount of difference, but basic thing is this is a very very good fork very smooth uh very stiff very well controlled in its stock set up with it wide open on this zesty i found it dived a bit too much uh wasn't really that much support so spent most of the time on the zesty with a about halfway through the low speed compression damping that sits the fork up a lot better uh, it's much less likely to use full travel and just a lot more controlled front end and to match that's on the back Hidden away neatly in here, you've got a Fox Float DPS shock, nice long stroke, driving back through this uh, straddle mainframe section here. And again, you've got open, you've got open pedal and firm. And again, just to get that extra support in fully open, I found it kind of blew through the travel pretty easily. It's, it's I mean, it's very mobile. There's loads of traction, a very active ride if you want a comfortable ride. But for a more aggressive riding, it definitely works better in that pedal mode in the middle. So don't just use it for pedal, I'd use it for cornering and just a more attacking style as well. Uh, this little kicker linkage here and that long stroke shock gives it 150mm travel at the back again. And all the suspension architecture is hidden very neatly into this uh, full carbon mainframe at the front end. So it's a very neat package the way it sort of drives back in there. And it also means with these really deep chainstays on here, even with space for a, you know, a lot of space, as you can see, around that 2.5 wide tyre on these 35mm rims, it's only a 435mm chainstay, so really short and really lively and agile for an e-bike. And the whole concept of the EZST is kind of e-bike light. Full yeah. bike weighs under 20 kilos, it's 19.8 with battery on board. Apart from a few very, very top-end Super Bling ones, that's remarkably light for an e-bike and the angles are just nice trail balance as well got a 65.5 degree head tube 75 degree seat angle for a good sort of purposeful pedaling stance when you're seated and also moves you from further forward in the bike for a more sort of attacking stance on the bike now it's just, it's just really it just feels really natural as soon as you jump on board 35 mil stem as standard 780 mil bars and the whole bike just kind of sits together straight away i've had to do very very little in terms of kind of learning the bike and setting it up even straight into the first turns it just felt really really well balanced uh tire spec again like i say it's a 2.5 wide tire so high roller both ends so you know classic super grippy tire and it's in 3c max terra so not a reinforced sidewall so if you're regularly hitting rocks you might want to go to xo plus but it's certainly i mean gisborne is not an easy ride for a tire and it's certainly been fine today and they come tubed but you can go tubeless super easy with this rim and tire setup and i'd certainly advise that if you're buying it from a lapierre dealer get them to set it tubeless and also going back to the suspension if you can get them to put a volume spacer or maybe even two in the fork and one in the rear shock as well if you want that more aggressive kind of uh more of a firmer stance in the mid stroke of the suspension that's what you want to do put a bit more of a volume tune in there in terms of other kit you've got a specific uh, fsa isis crank for this vizua setup but you've got a full-size sram 32 tooth chain ring so there's no problem with chain wear on a little cassette on a little chain ring there fully replaceable it's x 
X-Sync 2 chainring pattern as well, so the tooth profile's really, really good in terms of it sharing uh, chain wear and a really smooth feel under drive. SRAM GX Eagle on the back, and that's a 1230 cassette. So it's the cheaper style of cassette. Uh, it goes on standard splined free hub rather than a XD free hub. But actually, these were the first cassettes that SRAM kind of listed for e-bike use. So although the, you can use any, they've now said you can use any Eagle cassette these are the ones that were initially the sort of ones that were marked out as the toughest, most reliable with that extra torque in there. They really haven't skimped on the braking. Uh, guide RE brakes with 200 mil rotors, front and rear. That's an awesome sight to see on any bike, but specifically an e-bike, even a lightweight one like this. You've got dropper post as standard, 150 mil dropper. So, you know, more than enough to space to get it out of the way. Again, if you really want to size up, although this has got a 470 mil reach on this large, you can go to an extra large. Currently, that's one thing you do have to bear in mind there's no small or extra small uh bikes in this range just m medium large and extra large but flipping it around to this side now you can just see what a neat design is i mean not only is that for motor super quiet it's just really neatly integrated i mean the whole bike it's you'd struggle to know this was an e-bike uh really without i mean if, obviously i've got the keys to the battery dangling out of it there but otherwise it's very neatly integrated because the actual bottom bracket system there is just that. It's just a bottom bracket plus all the uh, electrical sensors in there for torque measurement and kind of the brain of the system all sits around the bottom bracket there, which means, again, it's because it's so neatly packaged, you've got a fairly conventional suspension architecture sat on top and you've even got room for a bottle cage there. I mean, you probably need a side mount and it probably only take a small bottle conveniently, but you have got room there for a bottle cage mount and it's just you know if you look at the lines of it it's just a really classy looking bike and if you've watched the live ride review you'll see that straight away i just felt well set on the bike handling's really intuitive the way the fazua motor kicks in and out because it's not i mean it's a limited power setup i mean although 250 watts is the standard sort of rating for most motors these days this only maxes out at 400 uh, watts of torque so not a massively punchy motor kind of similar to kind of eco trail uh, settings in other motor systems and you've also only got a 250 watt hour battery but the really clever thing about the fazua motor is unlock it like that take it out Needs a bit of a wiggle sometimes. Oh, there's the latch. On the whole motor system there, you've actually got the, uh, that's the driver, that little spring-loaded clutch there. That's what connects to the bottom bracket set up down there. And then in here, you've got your battery back there. And you can see I've been out for a good few hours today and I've still got two out of five bars left. And you can even slide the battery cell out of there. I don't want to do this at the moment because it's dirty. But the actual battery itself weighs uh, for just under 1,400 grams. So that's equivalent to two normal water bottles. So it's not a massively, you know, it's not a massively heavy unit. If you wanted to get another battery pack, uh, they cost about 370 quid, I think, and double the range of it. And the fact that you can get a blanking plate to sit into that hole in the down tube means that you run the whole bike as a conventional unpowered you know, there's not even any motor. There's just, you can see there, as you wind it round, you can see the little impeller working in the bike there as you turn the cranks. That's all there is to it. There's no resistance at all in the setup. And without that battery and motor pack in there, it's a 16 kilo bike. Well, it's just under 17 kilos once you get the uh, sort of false tube that you need to put in there. And the business end of the Fazua system is just this little Type B remote here. So, you know, it's not, the most glamorous or high-tech thing com compared to the poshest Bosch ones, but it's certainly a lot less bulky than some of the other d displays we've seen, like the Bosch Purion and things like that. And you've got three mode, you've got three power modes, you've got Rocket, which is the most powerful, then River, which is kind of your flow mode, and then Breeze, which, to be fair, I've done most of the riding today in Breeze because it's just a nice little, little bit of assistance without being overwhelming. But even in the top power modes, because there's less of a kick, it's just, it doesn't throw you, don't throw the bike offline. It's just a much more subtle, kind of intuitive and natural way that the power just kicks in. And even though I've done 30k today around Gisborough and, you know, a couple of laps, and as you can see, I've still got four bars, I think that is. Yeah, I mean, that's four bars out of 11. Bit of a funny number, but yeah, four bars out of 11. So, you know, 
over 30% of the battery life left. So it's not outlandish to think that you could easily do like 45k of trail riding on this setup, even though the battery is less than half the size of the standard battery on an e-bike. But that's because the package is lighter, bike's more agile, and also because there's not as much torque, it's not as much of a strain on the battery. Then just some really nice detailing, in it? You've got these little scoops there for the cables. The rest of the cabling all comes out the top here, slip, you know, sides in neatly like here, like I say. Uh, tire room's really good. You've got these massive rotors front and rear for maximum braking power. Uh, I mean, it's, the Fazur is quite an expensive system. It's a German-made system, so you could find a, a, a better specced bike uh, if you just went for a sort of more conventional design. But everything on it does exactly what you need it to do, and it just works together really, really well. And in terms of sort of the styling and the integration of the whole motor package, I think it, they've done a superb job, even right down to, you know, little neat touches like that. So, and it's just great. It's absolutely great to just have Zesty sort of back on the, uh, back on the agenda as a really, really cutting edge, really enjoyable trail bike. And this E-Zesty is certainly something very, very different, which I think will really appeal to certain people or, or maybe even groups of people where you've got, you know, where you don't want to always have an e-bike or you just want a bike that you can expand the battery on if you need to or you want to buy this either an e-bike or a standard enduro bike i mean there's nothing else that really offers that kind of versatility and just looks belting which is not something you can say about many e-bikes i think it you know the styling on this is absolutely fantastic so anyway i'm running out of light now uh thank you very much for watching thanks for sharing this video and click for notifications if you want to hear more uh also consider joining my patreon channel where you can subscribe every month and get some more exclusive edits get some early stuff get some more in-depth analysis this video has been sponsored by lapierre but as you'll hopefully realize it's fully open and frank discussion of the pros and cons of this bike like i say it's not going to be for everyone but i think for a few people it's going to be absolutely spot on uh thanks to mavic for kit uh the uh jacket helmet and boots uh, not so impressed with these gloves uh, first ride on and I've torn the stitching to shreds so a bit of a fail there from uh, Mavic but jacket's been great and thanks to Endura for the MT500 splash trousers I'll be updating all those with individual reviews on my channel pretty damn quick and uh, thanks very much to uh, Gisborne Forest Hub for the end of ride cup of tea and thanks to the Gisborne Trail volunteers for some absolutely cracking trails. I'm Guy Kestivan, this has been Guy Kes TV, you've been watching the tech walk round on the Lapierre Ezesty AM9. Make sure you watch the live ride review as well because that's where the really interesting, insightful, exciting stuff happens. Thanks very much. <laughs>